Today we're going to look at the Hi-Tech Spectra 2.4 GHz Adaptive Frequency Hopping Spread Spectrum System. That's a mouthful. Um, comes in two parts. Here is the transmitter module. Goes in the back of your transmitter. Here is an Optima 7 receiver. You see the size of that. Its end pin has pins at that end and pins at that end, which may be convenient, may be inconvenient. It has one other little cool feature here. This little jumper plug in here, that plugs into the uh, SPC port, which is a supplementary power system. So you can run a separate battery just to power the receiver, and then the other battery you plug into these pins will power your servos. That means there's no chance of your servos dragging down your receiver pack and causing a brownout. Very good. But that's good because these receivers don't perform that well at low voltage. They seem to cut out at about 3.5 volts. So you really do need to use that supplementary power system if you've got anything other than a perfect battery to drive your servos. Okay, now, things I like about uh, the Spectra system is that it, it feels solid. This is actually quite a solid little package of receivers and it's not flaky. The plastic's very good. Um, it's good. Things I don't like, bing, look at that. That is what they call the Boda antenna, which is a, I don't know, boosted omnidirectional um, dipole antenna, I suppose. Um, it's heavy. Um, there's a stress point here where the wire goes into this little brass sleeve, so that could break off with the vibration. And the other thing is the antenna on the transmitter module. It's hardwired in. There's no plug on there. That's it. It's wired in. You can't... Uh, it doesn't come out the back of the module like it does with the uh, Corona or whatever. It doesn't come out the top. It's just hardwired. That's not so good. Um, for reasons, I'll show you now. Okay, here is the Hi-Tech Optic 6. This is a transmitter that I'm going to put the uh, frequency hopping system into. As you can see, it has a module in the back. And the module... The, 2.4 module just slots in there. Quite a nice fit. Plastic's pretty good. And here's the antenna. Now, as I say, this is a bit of a, a problem because this antenna doesn't fit anywhere. What you actually have to do is remove your telescopic antenna here and put in this plastic stub. This goes down inside the transmitter. Then this antenna will clip onto the top of the stub and allow you to use the system. Now, that's fine, but what if you're just transitioning from 72, 35, 36, whatever, onto 2.4 and you've got some planes with 72 meg receivers and some planes you're going to put your, your fancy new 2.4 receivers in. You're going to have to keep taking this antenna in and out, in and out. Um, it's going to be a major nightmare. The other systems that have an antenna mounted on the module, piece of cake, just swap modules. So what I've decided to do for the purposes of this testing is I'm just going to take the antenna to the damn handle. I mean, it'll be simple, effective and save a lot of messing about. Okay, here we are. I've fitted the low-tech solution to the high-tech problem by taping the uh, new antenna to the handle for the purpose of these tests. And now we have the module inside. I'm going to turn on the transmitter. You see a red LED comes on. Now I'll turn on the receiver, and you'll hear those beeps. That basically means she's already in going. And if I move the sticks, you'll see the servo moves as well. The servos, it's very smooth movement. One of the smoothest we've had so far in any of these systems, which should be expected because this is high tech. It's a, it's a brand name. Um, works fine. Um, if I turn the receiver off, and on again, virtually instantly comes back. About the same as the FR uh, Free Sky I tested the other day. Okay, piece of cake. Very good, top quality. Now, this is the normal mode, which High Tech describes as using um, a part of the band pre programmed in by High Tech themselves. Okay, now we're looking at the Spectrum Analyzer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another frequency hopping system, that's the um, FR Sky that I tested recently. I'm going to turn it on and I want you to watch what happens. Okay. That's turned on now. You'll see the signal appearing on the band. And it's, it's covering this whole range from about here to here. You see those right across the screen from there, right across to there. That's the full use of the ISM or the, the band that we're allocated for 2.4 gigahertz use. Um, notice that the, that the channels that the system's using to hop between are quite, quite widely spaced. And that means it's going to use as much of the band as it can, which is a good thing. Now, that's what I'd expect the high-tech system to do. But let's take a look at what the high-tech system does. Okay, now I've got the high-tech Optic 6 with the FR, uh, sorry, the, uh, the high-tech 2.4 module installed. I'm going to turn this on. You see the red LEDs on. That's normal mode. I'm going to put the transmitter here. And you watch what it does with use of the band. See the signal starting to come up now?
just turn the receiver on as well, just so we know what's going on. Okay, what do you see? What do you notice? What strikes you first about that particular plot? You remember the, the FR Sky system or Free Sky system used about that much of the band. This system is using just a little bit in the middle. Um, you notice also that the, the channel peaks are closer together with the, the high tech system. That means if we have a lot of interference around the middle of the band and you're in the normal mode, then it's going to have more effect on the high tech system. I can't understand why high tech engineers didn't set up their system in the normal mode to use as much of the band as possible so as to find any uh, little holes in the and the interference that may be there. Um, strange. Perhaps high tech can answer us on that one. I know they use 79 channels, but they're obviously not using all of them. And why are they only using the bits in the middle? And just in case you are wondering, yes, it is in the normal mode. It's not in the scan mode, so it hasn't sort of locked these bits out because of other stuff on the band. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the scan mode on the high tech system. And to demonstrate that, I follow the instructions. There's a little button on the back which we push with our little plastic device. It should beep once, then beep twice quickly. Okay, now you notice that the blue LED will come on to indicate it's now in scan mode. What I'll do is I shall power cycle the transmitter and receiver. Okay, now I'm going to turn on the transmitter in scan mode and you'll notice the LED flashes momentarily. That indicates it's scanning the band. Then it'll go solid once it's done a scan. Scan completed. Okay. Now if we look at the spectrum analyzer, see suddenly it's starting to use more of the band. It's found the band is clear. And here we go. You see it's got a much better sweep of the band this time, although it's not using the right hand half now. I mean, that was clear of interference, so why doesn't it use the right hand half of the band? It's, it's confusing. I don't, I don't understand why high tech have made this decision when Futaba and everyone else in their frequency hopping mode uses the entire band for maximum um, ability to eliminate the effects of interference in any one part of it.